Welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Rich Ladder here back with another video. We're going to be doing a reaction to the Caitlin Clark effect uh, segment that was on the sports reporters on ESPN. I didn't know the sports reporters was still going because ESPN has had tons of turnover with their old guard. And um, this, you know, kind of came as a shock to me that it was still going. Uh, it's Dan Patrick, Adam Schefter, uh, who normally does work with the NFL, Tracy Wolfson, and Bill Roden. And they're talking to Jeremy Schapp. I'm not going to play the video, but I do have a picture of all these people. And um, that'll just kind of show you who's speaking and I'm going to play the audio here. So uh, let's get it to where I can hear it <laughs> and we're going to go back. So here we go. WNBA, as we all know, is wrapping up this remarkable season of growth and interest. Um, and, and it comes off the heels of what Caitlin Clark helped achieve at Iowa for the last couple of years. Those remarkable ratings, the women's tournament outrating the men's. But there have been some growing pains as well, right? So they're showing uh, various highlights of, uh, you know, of Caitlin scoring, and they are about to roll into introducing the panel. There, and, and we've seen a lot of it on social media. We've seen tensions between fans uh, and players. We've seen uh, the league and the Players Association tensions with the media. Uh, we've seen uh, issues touching on homophobia and misogyny and racism. So when you think about the big picture and the Caitlin Clark effect and what's going on in the WNBA, what stands out to you right now? Yeah, I mean, personally. So it looks like Tracy Wolfson is gonna go first. The WNBA is such an inclusive league. So for me. Was it inclusive for Dierica Hamby or um, Skylar Diggins Smith when you know they both had weird circumstances with their pregnancy? and the team started treating them differently? I don't know, just tell me. Need to see the vitriol that's out there on social media and the players having to deal with it and deleting their accounts and to have an app that does it for them now and just to, to really have to deal with this every day when all they want to do is go out and play the game. I think it's terrible and I feel for them. And first of all, a lot of them need social media to help in terms of their marketing uh, capabilities. And so you can still have social media. You can have a team run it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what, what rock Tracy Wilson is underneath, but plenty of people use social media in a way um, to where they don't have to see that stuff. I understand that, you know, the stuff is coming towards them, but if it's that much of a, a concern, you can turn all that stuff over for a team, especially if the reason is you're using it for marketing. All that stuff is automated. You can do that with a couple clicks of a button. Oh, it's difficult for them. They shouldn't have to go through it. I've been so impressed with the product on the court. Over 200% viewership increase since Caitlin Clark has come in. And it's not just Caitlin Clark. It changed. Cap. We don't have to we don't have to keep doing this. It's not just Caitlin Clark. We can we can acknowledge the effect that Caitlin Clark has because we have the numbers and we have the charts. And then we can mention uh, there was an incline in the league, but there was a special phenomenon that tripled up this <laughs> in, this already bubbling incline. These are two growing entities that are merging together. Angel Reese and it's so many more of them. You tell me how many Angel Reese games on the road they were moving to bigger buildings. Just saying. I, I know they did well on the road, but they it, it was two different leagues. Pretty much like everything else when it comes to comparing Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. Them as well. And we can go back to the, you know, college basketball and the NIL. That's really what helped in terms of making Caitlin Clark's profile even greater than it was. At I agree with that because once you have all these other brands pushing you as a superstar, uh, it gets you just in front of more people naturally, uh, and they can tie that back to the basketball. People can become a fan watching someone in a commercial. Um, I, I think it is – Caitlin Clark is probably the first of you know these phenomenons because – they are going to get to rake it in in the women's game in a way that is similar to how the guys got to rake it in before they started leaving 
uh, for the draft either early or with high school players. They're going to have the opportunity to have NIL for four years and then build up alongside those traditional powers and the new powers that are going to come to prominence. So that's a good point by Tracy. And uh, the way she's been able to be out there and what she's been able to carry out onto the court. By the way, you can just look to that shot by Yanevsku the other day. That was incredible. That scene was awesome. Minnesota was rocking. It was a packed house. That's what I love to see from the WNBA. That product is awesome, and they are really growing. Dan, you're a hoops guy. I think what's... So we're going to Dan Patrick now. What's great with college basketball for women is they stay for four years. So we get to know Paige Beckers. We're going to get to know Juju. We're going to get to know all of these players, whereas college basketball is really not interesting during the regular season because we didn't wait for somebody to come back their sophomore year or their junior year. We we were treated to Tim Duncan staying four years, Patrick Ewing staying, Christian Leitner. It doesn't happen. Women's basketball, that person will be back the following season. And, prob- and whatever is keeping this as such they do not need to change anything i think they have combined with nil the four-year commitments there is no rush to prep these superstars because like caitlin clark could just be the first of many juju watkins is coming Paige is coming and people after that will be coming that are eighth graders right now that we don't even know so like this is potentially like the way to turn the wmba into a hugely successful league that is not losing, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Probably the following season after that. And then, so we already know you going into the WNBA. It almost felt like the WNBA wasn't ready for what Caitlin Clark was going to bring with her. And that meant you were going to have people not familiar with the WNBA. I was shocked that Fans were shocked, so-called fans, with the physicality of the WNBA. You clearly haven't watched the WNBA. They are physical. And all of a sudden, it's Caitlin Clark's getting roughed up. Well, uh, there's a variety of players who get roughed up. What? Well, she actually was getting roughed up. Like, (laughs) that's the thing. Saying Caitlin Clark is getting roughed up or extra targeted does not mean other players are not being roughed up. That means Caitlin Clark is being roughed up, and possibly there are additional reasons that this is happening. Um, I think that when we look and see Caitlin and how she adapted to the physicality throughout the, the year, a lot of that was overblown. This woman is six feet tall, 155 pounds. She's bigger than most guards. So what people tried to do was, you know, the excessive flagrant fouls, kind of like the Kennedy Carter, like send a message, body check things. Um, Some of the uh, fouls like Angel Reese, like was a basketball attempt to make a play on the ball, but, you know, it ended up hitting her across the head. There was the Diamond um, DeShields or Diamond Miller, uh, I believe, uh, from the sky. I thought that one was, you know, kind of ridiculous, but that seemed like it came in the flow of the game where Caitlin was killing them on Barbie night in their hometown, and size just kind of left the starters out too long, and you can expect some kind of hard foul to come from that. But trying to say, like, oh, yeah, everyone gets – foul hard like that that does not address what was actually happening with Caitlin Clark who was getting flagrant fouled at a higher rate than anybody in the league watch the games watch other games it felt like they were zeroing in on our little Caitlin Clark and she's getting roughed up was she yes but that's the physicality of this she's a wonderful player she brought a lot of eyeballs and because of that she brought a lot of opinions it's almost be careful what you ask for And I don't think the WNBA was truly ready for what was going to happen with the casual fan coming in. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, um, (laughs) you know, I think the only thing they thought about was trying to front load the schedule to try to expose uh, some of the better teams to as many eyes as possible. And besides that, I I don't really know what what the league did. (laughs) If someone does know, feel free to fill me in. It, it it kind of brings us back. So this is back to Jeremy Schapp now. To 1997, right? When Tiger Woods broke through at the Masters as a 21-year-old, that remarkable performance. And I'm trying to think, 
Has there been an athlete since Tiger Woods? And of course, his impact extended beyond the golf course. But in terms of the way they have generated interest in their game, in their sport, the way that Caitlin Clark has, hmm. has there been anybody else? I've kind of rejected the Tiger Woods comparison um, because Caitlin Clark is an anomaly different than the way Tiger Woods was. Like, before Tiger Woods, I don't think there was any type of, like, black or African-American type presence in golf, and that is just a shock in itself. Like, this is a country club sport. There were white women in the WNBA before Caitlin Clark. There was Sabrina Ionescu. There was Kelsey Plum. And when I say white women, I mean straight white women. Like, and, you know, just the way the league kind of gets received, like, that is – what has been blamed for, you know, Caitlin Clark's popularity is like, she's not the only one of that cut per se. Um, now did that help her? Maybe, but there are plenty of, you know, people that gain particular advantages throughout their life or anything. It's all about how they deal with it. And for me, Caitlin Clark is kind of deal with it like an ace, like, as far as like how she just kind of reacts to things and doesn't spin a lot of things out of control. And she's like perfectly media trained. Like she's never going to start a fire essentially. And I'll put you on the spot, Adam, that you can think of, I mean, in this quarter century plus since Tiger. No, but you know, so uh, here comes Adam Schefter. Well, here's the thing, Jeremy, again, this morning we're doing sports center. We're doing get up. I'm seeing highlights of the WNBA. And the last time I did sports reporters, I don't remember the WNBA being a conversation and talking point. I don't remember that being the case. The fact that it is so prevalent in mainstream highlights that we're talking about it here shows the growth of the sport, shows the power of Caitlin Clark, shows you how many more people are paying attention to it. I think there are people that come along all the time that capture the imagination of the public. Caitlin Clark has grown all the eyes on that sport. And I don't know that there's a figure that I could think of off the top of my head that has had the influence and the impact that she has had. But again, I just think the whole sport has taken leaps and bounds. So we can talk about them needing leadership and getting used to all the ways that they're being scrutinized, the attention. This all comes along with being a big time, big league sport. I don't really think uh, Schefter had much to add, like as far as specifics. S looks like he kind of just took a general overview of the entire situation, uh, which is fine. You know, if he doesn't want to go down those uh, waters and, you know, he hasn't educated himself enough, I'm not going to ask him, you know, for anything deeper than that. Look, we, But also we it helps, though, Shefty, with being on the mothership that it's like hockey going back to ESPN was the best thing to happen to hockey because you're getting those highlights now where maybe you weren't getting those highlights, you know, back in the day or, you know, they were buried. Now they're showcasing, now they're celebrating. And I think that's really important. The audience will kind of buy into what you're buying into. What are you covering? Um, hey, we're going to be talking about this. Hey, you want to see this game coming up? Why? I mean, sometimes you got to spoon feed your audience and let them know this is something you truly want to watch. ESPN plays a large, large role in, in moving forward in some of these sports like that. Bill Roden didn't even get to talk, so um, <laughs> he had nothing to offer, offer the gentleman in the upper, upper right-hand corner. But, um, yeah, I, I, overall, you know, I think that they could have like gone way deeper. This is obviously a um, half hour show. I believe the sports reporters is so there's only so much they can really say. Uh, I don't really largely disagree with, you know, too much of, of what they said. There was a couple things from Tracy Wolfson. I think that either were needed additional context, which I think I provided, or they needed like someone to slightly push back on some of those things. But this is a league on the ascent. This is, I would be interested to see what the um, league pass subscriptions look like next year. I would anticipate a huge increase. Even someone, someone like myself this year, I was going to get the league pass um, before, you know, the, the season. It was only 35 bucks, but I was like, well, you know, do I want to like invest, you know, in that and, you know, then essentially commit myself to watching the games. I ended up watching most of the games anyway, because my streaming services, I've got access to a lot of the games already, but next year I'm definitely getting a, a subscription to league pass so I can just watch whatever I want, 
easily and conveniently. And I think that the part that's being missed is Caitlin Clark brought so many people to the game that largely are not on, uh, you know, they don't have an axe to grind with, with the league. They don't want to necessarily disrespect everything that came before her. But we want the people to really kind of accept her within the fraternity seemingly and as the next great player in the league. And it's like, I think the pushback to that has caused all type of fireworks and bombs from there. And then what comes from there, we can't really, you know, I, I'm not going to police that stuff. So like that's, that's people asking, that's people putting out absurd hypotheticals where they're bending over backwards so far that they come out on the other side to, uh, to downplay this woman, whether it was the rookie of the year race, the um, voting and some of the all W uh, you know, stuff or the, uh, the MVP voting, different stuff like that. And, and then, you know, as far as saying now, still, it's not just her. Like, I think, people have to divorce themselves for, from that and start calling things what they are. So, um, you know, I'm going to keep my eye out for, for anything else I see, but if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like the channel or like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below helps me out a great deal. And, um, we'll be back next time. This is one lifetime.